If it's haram, you want to change your ways, ask yourself, are you ready for marriage? If not, cut it, drop it, don't use and abuse. A lot of people say, I want to marry you, but you know what, three years, three years. That's another problem we face. Parents have agreed, but they say the marriage will only happen in three years. These children are literally spending their life like husband and wife already. And you're just saying nikah will happen. I'm worried about people. Worried about people? Subhanallah. It's the second time I said it. How can you worry about people when you don't even know how long you're going to live? You set the trend, people will follow. Wallahi, there was an example of a very rich person in one of the countries and he's a friend of mine. And I told him, he said, I want to throw a party for my daughter. She's the only daughter getting married and I want to invite so many. I said, listen, brother, if you keep it simple and set a trend, a lot of people will follow. Wallahi, he kept it simple and straightforward and he did everything as per the Islamic you know, rulings. And I swear, so many people followed. And I said, there you are, brother, you get the reward of everyone. They looked at the Joneses and followed, saw that the Joneses themselves were so down to earth. Who are we? The problem is every wedding has become a competition. You know, those who are not even the bride, they fuss about the clothing they're going to wear at someone else's wedding, whom they don't even get along with sometime, just because they, and they have a new set of clothing sewn, and shoes, and handbags, accessories, and whatnot, and hijabs, for someone else's wedding. Whereas for your own wedding, you're supposed to be even simpler than that. May Allah forgive us. And this is why we say, keep it simple. It's not supposed to be a competition. And I was told by one of the brothers, well, you know what, we like all the sisters to dress up nicely because we go to weddings in order to find one for ourselves. Well, that's not the platform. You know, I remember uh, in one of the cultures, you know, culturally, there are some people who think, well, you go to the wedding to scout. You go and scout. Well, if the boys are scouting the girls, that's not a religious function. Right? However, if your sister comes across someone, your brother comes across a, a decent brother and so on, and they bring the issue up, remember you have sisters to get married. If I see a sister who's old and she's not married, I blame the males who are nearest to her, starting from her father. You were supposed to have kept an eye out. You were supposed to have spoken. Don't be shy. Speak. Say, look, brother. You know, it's happened to me as well, where I've had young people come to me and say, you know, so and so, so and so, so and so, I have this, this, this. What do you think of marriage? And subhanAllah, I will answer in my own way with respect. But I really admire your courage. I really admire your courage. Wallahi. And I believe that that's the right thing because who knows, you will ask five or ten people and one of them who's the right one chosen by Allah will probably say, hey, mashallah, let's take it a step further. And you might end up getting married, but you've done nothing. People say, oh, you want to get married? Make dua. Make dua? Is it like a pot that you keep on making something? No way. Make dua. Yes, we will do the dua, but with that we have to act. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us, these haram relations, to make them halal. You need to make sure that you get the nikah done. Simple as that. Even if you cannot afford to live with each other now, I encourage your parents, I encourage all parents out there to look into the following scenario. And that is, if your children cannot afford to live with each other in the same home for now, let the nikah happen and let them live separately. No one said that they have to live together right now. But if the nikah has taken place, and then what will happen? At least the relationship is halal. So you are invoking the mercy of Allah. The mercy of Allah descends on you. This is how you will achieve. If there's no mercy, what are you going to achieve? Subhanallah. So you cannot continue to just say, this guy can't afford a home. And therefore, when he has a job worth 130,000 pounds a year, when he's got a, a car and a house, then we will allow the nikah. Trust me, they've already, they're already living, like I said, husband and wife, committing every sin there is in the book. And you know what? You're just waiting for 10 years to pass. By that time, they could have had children who were already in the school. Subhanallah. Can I tell you what? A lot of the old people are very guilty of wanting the, their sons-in-law to be wealthy people when they married their own wives, who are the mothers of these same daughters. They didn't even have a pair of shoes. Do you know that? So don't make it a criteria, you need a home, you need a house. 
He just needs to be responsible. If he's responsible, he will take care of your daughter like he's taking care of everyone else. Subhanallah. He doesn't need to be a millionaire. Wallahi, if that was the case, the hadith would have said, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ عِنْدَهُ مَالْ فَزَوِّجُوهُ If someone came to you, they have a lot of wealth, get them married. Never has that been a criteria. Subhanallah. Remember this, responsible individual. Yes, they may have to downgrade their lives. Some might be fortunate to upgrade a little bit. That can be taken away immediately. I know of so many people who were wealthy when they got married and they lost absolutely everything a little bit later down the line. And I know the opposite. People who were poor, they got married. Allah says in the Quran that if you marry and you are not able, meaning you're not so wealthy, if you do that in order to protect your chastity, Allah will grant you sustenance. He will make you wealthy. Listen in Surah An-Nur, Allah says, Speaking about marriage, if the two are poor, their intention was to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will grant them that financial independence. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So please, my brothers and sisters, if you're not interested in the nikah, don't use and abuse someone's child. Never. Don't play a game to say, we'll get married in five years. And in the, within that time, the girl is waiting for you or the boy is waiting, for example, and two years later, you just say, not interested. You've broken their, not only their heart, you've destroyed a life. That's what you've done. The person could have actually gone and married someone else. However, the last thing I'm going to say here is that if you have committed sin in the past, you've done haram and so on, please, if, the, if Allah has made it such that the two of you are now getting married, seek Allah's forgiveness for whatever you've done in the past. Start a new leaf. People have committed adultery, whatever they've done, they're now getting married. They're now getting married. Seek Allah's forgiveness. Have your function in a proper way that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what's the point of having a haram function when Allah's facilitated halal relationship? What's the point? Just have a simple function, beautiful for the sake of Allah. Trust me, what you need most is contentment. You know, all the haram that happened in the function is not going to come to your aid. It will actually result in your detriment. To be honest, those who have had functions where haram has taken place, seek Allah's forgiveness. You will turn a new leaf and proceed. Because that function is a seed that you're sowing for the tree that's about to grow in your life. If it's a bad seed, do you expect a good fruit to come out of it? Well, if you engage in tawbah, still Allah's mercy will grant you good fruit. So please, let's mend our ways. Let's come out. Allah's made it so easy. Don't use the cheap excuses. I have spoken to so many parents I don't even know because of emails that have come in my direction. And I've offered or volunteered to be a middleman to say, I'll speak to your parents. Some of them have sworn me. Some of them have told me, would you give your own child? And I said, yes, I would. Are you sure? They were quiet. Are you sure? I said, yes, I would. And mashallah, a lot of them have actually given their daughters and their sons. Subhanallah, they've blessed the marriages. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for having dwindled off the path. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us back upon revelation. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simplify all the difficulties that people are facing in terms of marriage. I support you. I really do. Remember the two qualities, deen and khuluq. If that's the case, you have the support not only of myself, but even of Allah and His Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, I just want to finish off. Um, this was a dream to me to have this uh, topic with you, inshallah. And also, brothers and sisters, this video, not video, obviously it's been recorded. It's going to be on YouTube. If you've missed out anything, and we, we discussed regarding a lot of topics regarding zina, if you go to my YouTube channel, I've got a whole reality show based on this topic. So inshallah, if you guys, uh, inshallah you guys will benefit. And before I uh, finish, I want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most just. All praises, glory and gratitude belong to Him for the, all the works that we do. And keep us in your dua. And may Allah grant you Jannah for sharing this platform. We have one more problem. How do we get Ameen. the parents who we address today to watch the YouTube clip, Habibi? See, Can that, we pay them? Can we pay them some money or something? If I was a millionaire... Wallahi, I would pay them. You know why? Because that's the problem. With the YouTube videos, th that's not my mark. Like, they don't watch it. So every time I'm on a platform like this where there's an audience or I'm on TV where I know aunties and uncles are watching, the first topic that I discuss is this.
the, f- the opportunity that I have. If I had the money, I would pay them. Wallahi. You know, aunties and uncles don't help. We want the parents. Subhanallah. Yes. Let's talk to them. May Allah. I, I hope, you know what, that their parents in our midst and even later on, please listen to what we've said. It's a passionate plea. We're looking for solutions of the problems of the ummah. We really want solutions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us vehicles of solution to the degree that on the day of judgment when we arrive, perhaps Allah might just look at that deed and take you straight to Jannah. You know what? You broke every norm that was wrong in order for you to please me. Here is your paradise. May Allah grant that to us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Iqra kitab Allah tarq jinanahu wa tan العظيم الأجر والغفران رتله روى القلب من نفحاته كالماء يروي لهفة العطشان Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us. جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته